Fully Coley Alternative, Episode 6, the final episode, titled Full Flat, and the final episode of Fully Coley to date. Continues on with Medical Mechanica finally starting up their operations to flatten the Earth. Now, it's worth noting that the flattening that was originally talked in of in the original series plays out a lot differently here, as it w in which it feels like they're going more literal than metaphorical here. Although, considering that Medical Mechanica got disrupted before anything could really begin with them, it's kind of hard to say if it, that's not what they were originally going to go with. <clears throat> But we see Haruko battling various a robot that looks very much like Conti in order to continue to try to drill and break down the plant. Um, she has a hard struggle against this robot and eventually her drilling equipment is destroyed. She does manage to defeat this robot, but she comes to the realization that this is going to be a lot harder than she thought. And here I have to ultimately point out, everything that has happened with Haruko up until this point never gets an explanation. If you're watching this, I have to assume you've already been through this series, as it just goes without saying that no, none of Haruko's objectives really come into play here. None of her obsession with Adamus, none of her quest for more power freedom or her involvement with the galactic brotherhood or whatever nothing of that sort really comes into play and for the most part that dubious nature that haruko has displayed doesn't really lead up into anything if nothing else it just seemed like she was after kana all this time and as she lays back, looking up to the sky, wondering what she can do next, we ultimately see a actual terminal core come down and engage with the medical mechanica plant. And as various people try to escape the city in vain, because this will cover the entirety of the planet, we see that the military force is at the ready to try and take down medical mechanica. But as we saw in Progressive, that ain't gonna do jack squat. Um, and as we see Canada just observing the amount of time that the world has left before Medical Mechanica engages in their plans, she, he engages in one last conversation with the Prime Minister, who damn near pretty much gloats about the fact that she's going to manage to escape with all of the more well-to-do people and families. We also see Hijiri and Mosan just walking their way back to uh, school like it's just another day. You know, they lament about the fact that they haven't seen Kana in a while, but that's about it. They're, they're so just lackadaisical about the whole situation, despite the fact that the Earth is basically about to end. Like, but... A lot of my favorite series had a tendency to do this, um, where it was just these really intense moments that were just severely underplayed. Like, the end of the world came not with a bang, but a whimper, and people just kind of went about their daily lives despite, despite the fact that the world is coming to an end. And honestly... That kind of seems like the gr best way to go out, you know? If you're just going to meet your end with no real way of stopping it, why not just go about your life? You know, it doesn't seem like that bad of a way to go. Although that's just my point of view. And as we see Kana still lamenting everything that happened between her and Pets, she ultimately decides to go to work. Where even Yoga is basically just like, I'm surprised you show up. It's like we don't really have that many customers. Damn world's coming to an end anyway. You know, no point in you hanging around here. I mean, I'm going to be here because this is my passion. It's what I do, but you know, just don't make any sense to me. 
And we even see Kanada here just ordering the same thing he always does. But we come to find out that he actually wanted something a little different. But Kana is just taken aback by this for a moment. Just going on about the fact that it's just like she wants things to stay the same. You know, she just wants things to go back to the way they've always been up until now. And as she ends up just happening upon the rest of her friends, you know, they just kind of spend some time together. And, you know, Canada meets up with Haruko, who's just kind of a little beaten and bruised from, you know, going at the medical mechanico plant. And Canada's just kind of giving in to the fact that there's nothing left to do. There's nothing more they can do in order to stop Medical Mechanica. But Haruko makes it very well known that she's not willing to stop fighting it. Why she's so willing to fight them, what investment she has in all of this, is never really brought up. Which is double-edged sword, because I like the fact that for once we're not just dealing with all of her baggage and selfishness and just deep-rooted obsession but at the same time it's just weird to have a haruko who's you know <clears throat> doing this more or less from the looks of things out of the kindness of her heart and as the girls manage to hit the beach you know they look out towards the island of all the ships you know the artificial island of all the ships to escape to mars they, you know, in their own way, just bid farewell to pets, holding up the various items they traded with her, solidifying the fact that pets is not coming back. You know, everything that happened last, last episode, that's it. That's, that's all she wrote. And, you know, that takes a lot of guts on the part of this series to not have any kind of resolution come from all of that. Where pets just left in a very bitter manner and honestly that that that's life man sometimes you part ways with people that just you know said all these mean-spirited things to you and whether they meant it or not that's that's just there that's just how things are now you know you are no longer around that person and they didn't much care for you you know I don't know how many people have really been in situations like that, but I know people who have been in situations like that, and it's just like, that that's just how it was. You know, there was nothing you could do about it, and you had to move on. Which Kana has to just kind of come to terms with. You know, she has to kind of just think about the fact that whether she liked it or not, things are changing, you know? life is moving on with or without her you know nothing was ever really gonna stay the same and it's that same thought process we got from this first episode that you know not everything was going to change had this series ended without something major happening i think that would have been a letdown and i know plenty of people don't care for this series as the fact that it doesn't really embody fully coolly as a whole but i think for this series in and of itself to have this major of a change happen with the main character and another main character to just have this falling out that just lingers right up until the very end that's a very powerful way to go about things and as we see the rockets proceed to take off we have glimpses of the various characters and this narration by Kana. And, you know, it was during this that I just kind of found myself thinking about the fact that with the original series, there was this explosion of passion and, you know, thrill and adventure. It's like, it's that feeling of moving on to something new. You know, it's exciting, it's dangerous, it's scary, it's wild, it's weird, it's out there. It's just this thing that you can't really explain, you know, you can't really put into words, and even words don't really give it justice. And with Progressive, with all the stuff that happened to Hibijiri and all the things that she was going through, where she was just in this stagnant state, where it's just like nothing changes, nothing develops, nothing proceeds forward. It's this middle faction, this middle ground where it's just like 
nothing is supposed to happen nothing's supposed to change nothing's really supposed to develop and even that series in and of itself you could say that about it whether that was intentional or not i, I it's hard to say maybe i'm giving the series too much credit these follow-ups but it just feels impactful you know whether it meant to be or not and even in terms of this series alternative where there's this whole theme of life moves on things change things develop nothing stays the same things go on beyond our control and that's the perfect message to have in a series like this because ultimately People came into these follow-up series expecting it to be more of the same, hoping it would just rekindle that childhood nostalgia of watching the original series, but it was never going to be that. It should never be that. You know, you shouldn't go into something just wanting nothing but a retread of everything you saw before because, you know, then what's the point? You know, you should be able to move on with newer concepts, ideas, development, um, revelations, just all these multifaceted things. Because sometimes you need to look beyond your nostalgia to discover the good in something else. You know, and while I do have my gripes towards this series, I, I love this kind of message it's trying to convey, to portray, just getting it out there that things change, things develop, nothing you want in life will remain the same. And I also love this little moment where Yoga finally comes out to get on his Vespa scooter, the yellow one that we know Harukoto rides so well. All throughout this series, it's just been parked throughout, uh, in front of this shop, and it's finally gone. Haruko has made off with it. And there's this just this nice little moment where, you know, Kana and her friends watch the various rockets take off. And Kana just has to kind of soak in the fact that, yes, she will not see pets again. More than likely, that's it. That's all of it. It's done. You know, pets is true feelings. Whether she really meant everything she said or she was just trying to make their parting easier is left up in the air. <laughs> Ultimately, though, this is interrupted by the you know, arrival of Haruko who runs over Kana and just drags her off saying that it's just like, hey, no time to explain, I'm taking the girl, let's go. And as the clock reaches zero, where Medical Mechanica begins its, you know, plan to flatten the face of the earth and we see the iron just barreling through the city, you know, just causing nothing but destruction in its wake. Haruko says that using Kana, she will destroy it. We cut to a little earlier where Kana does just like, hey, you know, our best option is Kana. She has the power to change this. Her NO channel is massively powerful and it can do things that you would never believe. So our best option is to use that in order to destroy the Medical Mechanica plant. And as Kana finally regains consciousness, she is beholden to the flattening destruction of the iron, just crushing and flattening everything into its wake. Even the school gets flattened, which is kind of messed up. And you know, Haruko just kind of talks, kind of just like, are you just going to let this happen? Are you just going to stand by as all of this destruction happens? Or are you going to do something with the power that you have? And even kind of the steps forward, just saying, it's just like, you wanted things to remain the same, but that just doesn't happen. That's not how it works. You know, much of the same spiel that I've been going on. It's just like life moves forward, whether you like it or not. And, you know, yes, it's hard, you know, hell, for me personally, it's just been hard just moving forward past a lot of things. But, you know, 
you either move forward and develop and grow and change or you you know nothing ever comes if thing if something just remains the same as it's always been then there's no development there's no growth that's how civilizations die when nothing new is introduced to them that's how you get a dead civilization and ultimately kind of decides that she's going to go through with it she's going to stop this iron and save her home and as she begins to try to invoke her NO, you know, they're ambushed by these bunch of Medical Mechanica Conti robots who are just ready to beat them up like a bunch of biker gang thugs. And as Kana's friends and, you know, Kanada and Haruko engage with the various robots, she begins to try to just spout out all her feelings, get her all of her emotions out, you know, fully engage her NO channel. But things aren't really looking good for everyone. Haruko breaks her back, quotation marks. And, you know, she just keeps trying to, going forward and having to save everyone, you know, do her best. Which, again, just takes you off guard in terms of Haruko. Love the Akira Nada also. But it just takes you off guard because it's just, you know, not what you're used to seeing for Haruko. You know, like she's grown in ways that we could have never thought or, you know, really guessed. And she just shouts at Kana, just saying, hey, are you still having hangups about your feelings? You're 17. Just shout it out. Get all your emotions out there. Stop bottling it up. You know, and then out of nowhere, Kana just engages. And for anyone who's seen Die Buster, she looks like Nonon when she finally engaged the fact that she's an android. Like, this is some weird studio trigger nods and all this good shit. The kind of stuff that it's just like, man, I... As good as this moment really is, I would have loved to seen this done by Studio Trigger. I would have loved to see this moment because it's just so intense and you know Kana's bandage is ripped off when we see the mark of Adamus but Haruko has no reaction to this really which just raises so many questions you know she's not climbing up over Kana demanding this power or anything she just has Kana go with it you know, whether this just means a symbol of great and phenomenal power or something like that, it's just very much left unknown. And Kana just starts pouring her heart out. And after she's targeted by Medical McKinnon himself because they notice the power that she's wielding, you know, she talks about the fact that, you know, when she was younger, she was very sickly, you know, just like with um, Sasaki. You know, there was just these moments as well that, you know, she wasn't able to go out and do things, and she really desired a friend. You know, she would have done anything to keep her friends together. That's why she butted in in their lives and, you know, invaded their privacy, made their dreams her own, because she just cares so much you know she says she's selfish but it's just like she wanted so badly to keep all of these things these emotions live in this moment of just having friends enjoying life that she was so desperate to cling to it that she sometimes just climbed up and over people's emotions which is what led to a lot of the bitterness that pets felt towards her but ultimately, she says, despite all this, you know, she loved pets. She loves her friends. She loves her home. She loves her world. And as her NO starts to just radiate out of control, things start floating. And this giant hole in space-time opens up and starts to consume everything like Jesus. And it just opens up. Op Above the earth, it just starts to engulf everything. And even Kanada is like, this is wild, man. This is just out of control. We could have never guessed that she would have been this powerful. And this just might end up be creating a worse situation in and of itself. But just Kana just keeps on going, pouring her heart out, just engaging all of this power. 
And I've heard people say that if that's all it really took for, you know, ML to be grown this powerfully, why did she, you know, why did Haruko treat, you know, um, Hibajiri and uh, Naoto the way that she did? Maybe various people just have their no just unlocked in different ways you know really don't know this series doesn't really explain jack man and you know she comes to terms with everything she comes to terms with the fact that despite her love for pets pets left and she has to just move forward it doesn't mean that her that love will cease to be there or cease to exist she just is glad she was able to experience what she did, what she could with the friends and family that she loved so much in the town that she cared for, the town she wants to have protect protected. And as she just completely unleashes all of her power, it just engulfs everything, seemingly destroying everything. And, you know, just... You know, pulling everything through this portal, specifically Haruko, and we see flashes of the original series just through her. And what this means is just so fully up in the air, just makes you wonder what this all means. Whether or not it's a good thing that you inquire as you don't have any real answers here, or a bad thing, it's just... It's just what it is, ultimately. You know, and as we see this, you know, smoothed out sphere out in space, we ultimately see in the ending credits a scene very similar to the opening of this series. The very first episode with Kana just casually going to school. And, you know, cl you know we cut to um, Mosan and Hijiri just going about their lives but we also see this image of Haruko in this desert terrain with a dome city off in the distance which I can only assume that means she's on Mars you know what she's actually gonna do if she's gonna go bring pets back you know we have no real answers here as she continues forward we don't see the chalk like drawings of Kana's you know imagination just kind of going wild you know she's living in them for tomorrow she's living for the future she's marching forward and we just see that she still holds on to the clip of pets and she's just moving on with her life you know nothing has really changed from the outside but on the inside a world of difference has been made and as the series comes to an end, we see the flattened out earth just almost reflected within the sky. Almost like, you know, space and time had warped around itself, creating this parallel world where all the Metal Mechanica was sent off to, possibly. I don't really know. And that's the end. That's it. That's fully, fully alternative you know and it's just so hard to really grasp how i feel about this series because on the one hand there's just this feeling of connection to it like i get a lot of what it was trying to say and do and i loved a lot of it but at the same time it's just kind of like whoa what a way to end all of this you know at least with the other series there was just kind of this feeling of you know, you kind of knew that things were left off in a very okay way. Things would be fine from here on out. But, you know, here it's just kind of left ambiguous. Are things going to be okay? Is Medical Mechanica still out there? Will, you know, the relationship between Kana and Pets ever be patched up again? You know, it just leaves so much open-ended. So many questions just lingering out there just for you to wonder you know and you know i know this kind of rubbed a lot of people wrong because it's just like no there should have been more to it it wasn't that great you know but for the most part i i'm glad it tried to do its own thing it didn't retread a lot of the same ground it just kind of kept moving forward doing its own thing and you know if you wanted a 
you know, it just, if you wanted just to see Fully Gully again, you can go back and watch Fully Gully. But if you wanted to just see something out there or set in the same kind of world or universe and just see where it goes, I don't think this was a bad watch ultimately. You know, it stirred a lot of emotions in me personally. You know, in terms of, you know, I kind of relate to Kana in this close connection with your friends and, you know, holding on to them maybe a little too tight sometimes and not really knowing what to do without them when some of them leave and just having this disconnect because, you know, you don't really know what you want to be or do for the future. You know, I, I'm glad that this series hit upon a lot of the things that it did. I feel like this series could have been a world better with a you know more exuberant animation team, but for what we got, it was fine enough. Not the wild nature that Fully Cooly had been come to known as, but I feel that it didn't diminish the original series. If you choose to ignore the progressive and alternative, nothing of value will really be lost. And if you choose to watch them and just, you know, thought they were great or it just kind of write them off, that's fine too. You know, that's life. Life is development, changes, you know, things just not really going the way you plan. Or maybe sometimes they do, you know. But hey, tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. I can ramble about this all friggin' day, man. And, you know, if you liked what I had to say here, leave me a like. If you didn't, feel free to leave me a dislike. And hey, subscribe for more weirdness, because you never know what life has in store. Thanks for joining me.